And then there's this viewer or viewing room. And um, when it's time for them to reincarnate again, we do process them. He says they all go to the computer room, which is an area where they can be reevaluated. The computer room sets them up and matches the time when an incarnation is going to be taking place and what type of lessons that incarnation will teach. They are shown how they can use that lifetime quickly. But he says, this is all going to be changing very shortly because the earth is going to be too highly evolved for these spirits. So we're going to be shipping these souls out to a lapse. And he says, you know, it's like, okay, you had your chance here. Next boat is going to Arcturus. Now the higher vibrational souls are different. When they cross over, they usually head for the temple of wisdom and knowledge because they've been there before. This could be where the schools are located. They bypass all of that negativity. And he says, then there are the mid-level souls. They like to manifest themselves in happy situations with their families that have crossed over. There are houses and lake resorts and boats for them. Uh -huh. um, similar to their lifestyle on earth, you mean? There are all different types of houses built up along one of the banks of the lake. And on one of the steep hillsides, there are all beautiful houses. And this is where people live if they choose to, especially people that have a hard time adjusting to the astral world. Um, so they can live in these houses. And then there's a low astral, mid astral, and upper astral. And the mid astral are these types. It's kind of like suburban America. There are nice houses and people are basically talking with their friends and their relatives and they're having good old memories. Sometimes spirit guides come into a house and talk to them and tell them they should start preparing for their next lifetimes. And they say, well, we just want to enjoy our families a little bit longer. Do we have time? Is it really necessary for us in our spiritual growth? He says, well, yes, you do need to go up to the temple. And they're kind of fearful. It's the attitude of, I don't know about that. <laughs> so even there, <laughs> in the astral, they're still like, like we're saying, they're, why do I need to grow? And we're having fun here with our family and friends. So is this the cosmic pressure that we've, cosmic we've pressure. read about? And so it's these entities or these guides or counselors, et cetera, always trying to persuade us to go. Why isn't it our, why can't we make our own decision without this persuasion? Right. And wouldn't we feel it from within just to so be so obvious that we need to do it, you would think, if it's a true, mm -hmm. true, necessary thing. Um, yeah, there are gardens and the prototypes of all the beautiful mountains, oceans, streams, lakes and waterfalls. They're all there and they're just wonderful. There's this beautiful jewel like city where the temple of wisdom is located. There are mountains surrounding it where some of the people that are upper astral entities live. But they come into the temple. They're souls that like that sense of comfort of home life and family life. He says many very evolved souls like this type of life. This is why they have their little villa houses on the slopes of the mountains. It's beautiful. Dolores says it sounds like the spirits are going to whatever area they are familiar with and they won't go to the next level until they're ready. Is that correct? He says yes. Or he says right. He says that you have to advance to a certain level, but he says the upper astral is where you want to go when you come over here. He says this is the place. It's just gorgeous. The mid astral, it's important. That's where a majority of the souls come to. They're neither good nor bad. They're just, they're not degenerate. They just want to see their family and their friends and they need time. But when it's time for them to go up to the computer room, it's time for them to go. And Loris asks, does everyone go to the computer room eventually? Oh yes, they all go. This is the processing room. But he says the lower entities have only a few more years to incarnate through all this negativity. He can't show me the computer room. It's a processing room where basically only the spirit guardians are allowed. This is the processing room where souls are lined up and matched with the appropriate bodies for them to incarnate in. It, it just reminds me of this like that Star Trek episode about um, Return of the Archons. And it's like, I don't know, it's just like, oh, the spirit guardians are allowed access to that computer that's room. Com that's a computer room. So they need, these spirits need this technology to figure this out, I guess. Uh, that's a little, <laughs> makes you wonder. Things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> um, says, this is the processing room where souls are lined up and matched with the appropriate bodies for them to incarnate in. Um, but he says it's different when a spirit from the upper astral wants to incarnate. It's like he has good documentation, so he's given priority. I mean, some of them are just shipped out. He says much of the pain and suffering of the people that have died of famine in Ethiopia and such things as that has been caused by past lifetimes of complete indulgence. He said these lives are being processed into higher spiritual energy for them. Loris says, then they're put into a life where they wouldn't live for very long, just long enough to try to repay some of those indulgences. And the answer is, um, the, the subject says, to suffer, to teach them that they have to grow spiritually. Um, interesting. Have you ever met one of your spirit guides and discovered they were actually a computer? Well, that happened to me. Keep watching and I'll tell you all about it. 
So if you watched my last video, you know that I had an amazing Beyond Quantum Healing hypnosis session with my friend and colleague, Heather Hank, um, who conducted the session for me, and we explored all kinds of things. In the last video, we learned that I am a reincarnated starseed priestess. Um, but in this portion of the hypnosis that I want to share with you, I got to learn about, meet, name one of my guides who is a healing guide and is a computer or at least works with computers. He does a lot of amazing things and I learned some interesting scientific biological knowledge about my body and received some healing as well. Where are you? I've seen a computer screen. Computer screen. Very good. Tell me more about this computer screen. Oh, there's like a lot of information. It's like scrolling through really fast. It doesn't want to slow down. It's like so much information. Do you feel like you have a body? I'm not sure. Okay, very good. So what else is in this place with this computer? It seems like it's like a laptop if I like pull out from that point of view. Uh, there's like a lot of blue sparkling. I'm having a hard time seeing it. It's if I look away from the computer, it's just like blue sparkling, like flashing lights. Uh, they don't seem like, like electric. They seem, um, like they're just there in the, in the air. They're like, um, sparkling at me. They're like kind of almost in, um, a, a rhythm on and off. It's directing me to a pyramid, to a pyramid shape. It seems to be spinning a little bit, not very fast, but it's, um, it's there, there's this, like, it's this strange computer room, and there's, like, servers, like, all around, um, in, like, in the walls, they're, um, storing this information, and you just have to look at it, and then it just, like, will, will just be imprinted inside of you, it just will come right into your brain. So you don't need to really read it. It's just you're already internalizing it. What's the information stored on it? It seems like it's bi biological, scientific knowledge um, that everybody should know, but, but most people don't. So, oh my gosh, these floating lights are my guide, my healing guide to be specific. Um, and not in a human or even biological form or anything like that. Have you ever met one of your guides and they just ended up being like floating, pixelated, sparkly lights? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. It just keeps scrolling, but it, it, it's strange because it, it does seem that I'm stuck on 5.1 and then scrolling down to 5.2. They're saying that um, 5.1 and 5.2 is, um, connecting to my, my throat chakra. So not necessarily like, you know, throat chakra in the traditional sense where like you, you feel like you can't speak for yourself or it's not that the reason it's 5.1 and 5.2 is because it correlates to the left side and the right side of the, the thyroid. And I do have um, some nodules on the right side of my thyroid. Um, so they're saying this is, the reason they're showing me this on the computer is because it's scientific biological knowledge of healing that our science doesn't normally like prescribe to or doesn't really understand or hasn't really uncovered. Okay, the computer's scrolling. It's scrolling really fast now. It's scrolling down to 82 and 80 
four, 82.1 is connected to the fibroids and 84.1 and 84.2 are connected to the, um, the endometriosis, but specifically on the ovaries, 84.1 and 84.2 is the right ovary where the malignancy is. And, and by malignancy, they don't mean like cancerous. It's not cancerous. It's just a malignant form. <laughs> They're saying also 86.1 is the general area for endometriosis um, in this table of contents. The fibroids are already healing themselves. And there's a lot of um, veins that are connected into um, the cyst. So it's being fed right now. The blood is going into the cyst and it's being fed by the blood from the ovary. Saying it's really important that we cut this source off feeding the cyst. I need more, I need more liquids. I'm not hydrating enough. Um, they're saying drink more water. They're saying eat some celery. Uh, eat more celery? Okay. Um, I mean, celery is good for you, right? I mean, it's usually touted as a diet food, but I didn't really think about it. And a few months after this hypnosis, uh, my friend and spiritual psychic medium colleague, Glenda Castro, actually made a post on Facebook and she tagged me and a couple other people with endometriosis. And it was a post from a medical medium talking about celery juice. And I actually hadn't read like any of his material or like watched any of his material. So when I was doing this hypnosis, unbeknownst to me, he's actually put out a plan for healing that involves like massive amounts of celery juice as a way to heal endometriosis. All the stuff they're actually showing me, it's not just, even though, you know, they were saying it's general biological scientific knowledge, it is general, but it, it is, these these are specific to my body. So um, they're saying if I ever need to, I can always go back to reference this computer, like on anything, um, I can just go right in to this computer and it can, we can just pull up whatever we need to. He seems to be working in the medical um, area. He's very knowledgeable of all this scientific stuff and he, he's connected to this computer. He's this computer energy, which is why he's just showing up as like a blinking light force. Um, but if you'd like to call him by a name, you can call him Nimbus. Nimbus, very good. Nimbus, what a great name for a cloud. <laughs> That's not a cloud. <laughs> what a great name for this healing guide, these sparkling blue lights um, guiding me through this computer healing. Um, just what an amazing experience. So I did this hypnosis way back in November, 2020, and it's now August, 2021. So you're probably wondering, did I take any of this healing advice? What did I do? Um, did my endometrioma cyst go away on my right ovary? Um, what happened? You know, as much as I wanted to practice all of the energy work that I learned about in this hypnosis, a lot has happened since then. Um, and I kind of talked about this in my previous video that, um, my mom went to hospital and I stepped in as her caregiver and then she ultimately passed. So I actually couldn't spend a lot of my time on myself. So I actually did end up getting a surgery, um, which they said was totally fine to get in the hypnosis. Um, but that's, that is the option that I chose at that time, just based on the current circumstances going on.